performance of the last years of Elvis Presley's life was like, it's my first guest. Rick Stanley was Elvis's stepbrother. At the age of 17, he became Elvis's personal aide. Both Rick and Elvis developed serious drug problems. As Rick puts it, it became evident that one of us wasn't going to make it. Rick was right. He was one of the last people to see Elvis alive. Will you please welcome a man who has been able to turn his life around totally, Mr. Rick Stanley. Thank you. Thank you. Now, you were Elvis's stepbrother. Your mom married Vernon. Exactly. July 3rd in Huntsville, Alabama, my mom remarried Vernon Presley, Elvis's dad. And you were, you came from really poor. I mean, you were living in an orphanage. Right. My parents split up when I was a child, Joan, and I was put in a children's home, an orphanage, while the divorce took place. And not only did Mom divorce, she immediately remarried Vernon, Elvis's dad, making me Elvis's stepbrother. So you went from rags to riches. Exactly. It was a difficult time being ah. in a situation like that. They found a way of punishing me by pouring Tabasco in my mouth as a child uh, when this, I'd leave my bed and try to comfort my brothers. It was tough. This was in the orphanage? Exactly. So now, what, you, how old? How old? Six. A six-year-old boy goes from an orphanage where they were not nice to him, and there is Elvis Presley. Did you know who he was? Had no idea who Elvis was when I was six years old. I see this young guy, 25 years old. He was already a major star. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Very cool, very hip, and he walks across the room, and he just kneels down, and looks at me and says, these are my little brothers, you're my little brother, and that's just the way I'm going to treat you. So that was the beginning of growing up with him. And did he treat you like that? Oh, yes. We walk outside the next day. There are cats, dogs, ponies, scooters, bicycles, tricycles, swing sets, three of everything. He had to arrange for his employees to buy all these toys and bring them to the mansion. Were you very, very close to him from the very beginning? Yes. Did he uh, treat you like a little brother and yes, that he, close? Yes, he treated me like a little brother. Elvis was very playful. We always played football together. We always had a great time at Christmas time. He uh, made sure I got a lot of attention by making sure I was taking to school every day in a pink Cadillac. Uh, we the were very close. <laughs> were the kids jealous? I mean, you went to school, public school in Nashville. Memphis. Memphis, I'm sorry. Of course, Memphis. Um, when you drive up in a pink Cadillac, I mean, do most of the kids go, hey, wish that were me? What? Yes, they did. Uh, it was more their parents. I would walk in class and be sitting there for a few moments, and the kids would come by and say, hey, what's Elvis like? Mom wants to know. Grandma wants to know. The teacher would get upset and say, step out in the hall, and I'd step out in the hall, and the teacher would come out and go, all right, what is he really like? So uh, <laughs> it was That's crazy. so stupid to ask you that. What was he like? <laughs> <That's>, uh, <laughs> do they still give it to you now? Well, obviously now. Oh, yes. Uh, a lot of people want to know about the guy. And the thing that's interesting, Joan, there's so many people clamoring and cluttering and talking about Elvis Presley that people have become suspect if he's even now, related to the man. Let me ask you. Priscilla wrote a book. Here's a very good example, right? Um, and she said she thinks Elvis had an affair with Ann Margaret. Mm -hmm. Now, you come out and you say Elvis didn't have an affair with Ann Margaret. Mm -hmm. There's so... Did he or didn't he? And who knows? I mean, who really knows these kind of things? Well, I can tell you that he didn't have an affair with her because I was there in Vegas at the time when Ann was around. Now, they'll da they dated. Before he was married, he had flipped over. I think she really cared about him. But Elvis had me try to, on several occasions, contact her while she was in Vegas. But she uh, let me know very clearly, no, I will see him with my husband around, and that'll be the end of that. So there was no affair. What about drugs? You were... And you, now you, you counsel teenage, you're a minister and you also counsel uh, teenage children about drugs. Mm -hmm. But you were wrapped up in drugs too. Did I Elvis in... turn you on? Did you turn him on? No, What Joan, was going on then? I got into drugs as a teenager like most kids in high school. If you want dope, go to school. school oh. it's, uh, it's in every school. So uh, I started out smoking pot, hallucinogenics, one thing after another. And then I started shooting heroin when I was 17. Where, where, uh, and you were living in Graceland? Yes. And I went through the drug rehab hospitals. I was busted in 1975 for narcotics. And Elvis <sighs> came to pick me up. And this is what was interesting. When he picked me up out of jail, he put his arms around my neck and he said, this is going to kill your mother when she finds this out. That's the side of Elvis Presley a lot of people don't know about. But yeah, he was on drugs. Yes, he justified so, his life. Yes, I mean, that doesn't make any sense. He puts his arms around you and says, it's going to kill you. Kill your mother. If there was a man that died of drugs. Exactly. Elvis justified what he did by saying they were prescribed. He said that they were legal. He could get away with it as long as it came from a doctor. There's people watching right now at home with problem with prescribed drugs. It's yeah, a real problem. But everybody was around, and we talk. We always hear about the Memphis Mafia. So mm -hmm. they were called. Why didn't anyone say, Elvis, look what's happened to you? As an outsider, I saw this man who I knew 
Vaguely, who I adored. I thought he was a wonderful man. He got fat. He got bloated. I saw him a couple times. He was obviously druggy. Why weren't all of you saying, stop it? Where were the girlfriends besides buying jewelry? Where were all these people not to, to, to allow this to happen, not to stop it? Well, I can only speak for myself, Joan. I was pretty much a gutless wonder at that time. I was afraid of confronting the man. I was on drugs myself. I was afraid of losing my job. Elvis, unfortunately, didn't have people around him that were direct enough to do that. We have a problem with that when kids hand keys to their buddies that have been drinking. It's the same type of thing, just a different yeah. scenario. I uh, was afraid of losing my job, and that's something I have to live with. Yeah. I have to look back over 12 years and say, Rick, why didn't you confront the man? Why didn't you go to the man? But I was really, really afraid of... Uh, Tell about your job. You, you went out and you, you trolled for him. Is that the expression? Yes. Which means you went looking... Well, what does trolling mean? Trolling meant when we were in Vegas and doing shows. After the show, I would go through the lobby and there would be a g bunch of girls sitting around. And my, part of my responsibility at that time was talking to some of the girls and bringing them upstairs and introducing them to Elvis. And we would talk for a while. Elvis would sit there and visit with him. And then he would say to me after visiting with several of them, I'd like to spend some time with this one. And I would pull her over and say, Elvis would like to have dinner with you. He would like for you to come in and sit down and visit with him. And I would brief him. He would debrief him. And uh, we would what go did, on from what there. What did you tell the girls when he said, do they always end up, they would end up sleeping? And that was a nice way to say sleeping with him, right? Are we being nice? Well, we're being, he didn't always sleep with him. He always, he was more into companionship. He wanted somebody there to hang out with him and talk with him. All uh, the time. At all times. And when he wasn't there, I was there. I would stay there in the room with him. We'd sit up late hours into the night and talk about a variety. Of now, he was married to Priscilla. What about one of these girls? Uh, what if, or she, spent, she met Elvis. She had dinner with Elvis. She spent the night with Elvis. Did she ever have trouble uh, if the girl said, I'm not, I'm not going? Or a girl's father showed up? Don't tell me. Let's go to the commercial. Because uh, I want to hear this. Did you ever have trouble? Yes. Ooh, ooh, don't go anywhere. back talking with Elvis' stepbrother, Rick Stanley. Um, we were starting to say, very often you'd, you'd pick up the girls, and sometimes they would sleep with them, sometimes they'd just be companions, but they'd spend the night. Mm -hmm. There's got to be, like in Fatal Attraction, there's got to be one girl that doesn't want to say, well, goodbye and thank you for the autographed picture. Mm -hmm. yeah. There were some frightening times uh, on one occasion when one girl decided she wanted to stay with him, and Elvis wanted her to stay, and then we get a call from security in Vegas that we have an eye right father down here the girl turned out to be 17 years old and there was a lot of shuffling and scrambling and excuses and moving her out real real quick yeah. and what about the father did he get a cadillac yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> here's my ring and call me when she's 18 and a half cadillac yeah. and a scarf and he was usually okay we yeah. usually uh we usually dealt with it that way we got into some frightening situations for instance one time in palm springs when uh one of the girls took some of Elvis's prescribed medication. It got kind of frightening, and we had to rush to an emergency room. So it was frightening sometimes. Oh, my God. Now, t talking about the prescribed or the medication, the drugs, when he died that night, someone told me, who was the, lady, the girl from there? Um, Ginger. Ginger. That she found him on the floor of the bathroom and, and left him there? What had happened was I had visited with him. We had talked about a variety of things. I told him of a girl who told me to stay away from drugs and stuff like that, get my life straightened were up. You, were you off of drugs at this point? No, I was heavily into drugs Still. at that time, shooting heroin and cocaine and whatever I could cook down and get in a spoon and draw up in a rig. What happened was I said goodnight to Elvis, went downstairs, got some things together. Ginger saw Elvis stretched out on the bathroom floor floor and thought he was asleep. Now, it's important that people understand this was something that was not uncommon. We've seen Elvis on the bathroom floor before. I've had to dislodge food from his throat when he was on prescribed drugs, so it was kind of common, but she went, showered, did all these things, and then called downstairs and said, I think, uh, I think we've got an emergency here, something's wrong, and was, he was dead. Was he incontinent? Well, I heard that, that they had to put him in diapers, and so he was really far, I mean, he was really far gone. If there's a man that's on drugs and you're dislodging food from his throat, he should have had a keeper, not a girlfriend. Well, that was part of my responsibility the last but few look at years. The, but look at the keeper. He was yeah. on drugs. The I keeper, mean, of all things, was on drugs, heavily in the it's drugs. It's crazy. I mean, looking back now, as a minister, this is the sickest situation, I mean, that's coming out. 
It's he was terrible. being kept by a heroin addict. His girlfriend said, oh, yeah, he honey bunches on the floor and goes and takes a shower. I mean, what the hell was going on there? Well, the problem was there was no authority in Elvis's life. I think Priscilla did a terrific job for a number of years. She kept him accountable. She was responsible. She made sure that he didn't go too far. And it was only the last part of his life that he got completely out of hand. But as I look back now, Joan, 12 years from now, I'm, I'm 35. I'm the same age Elvis was when I started work for him. I'm a grown man now. And I look at my past and I look at what a terrible scenario it really, really was. But I would like to say that it was just towards the end that it really got out of hand, really completely out of hand. He was so crazy about Lisa Marie, yes. who was a friend of my daughter's. They went to the same school when they were small. She was there when he died, which I didn't know that. Yes, Lisa was there, and we oh, talked about... What a thing for a child. We, uh, we talked about Melissa, you, uh, and what I'd like to say, thank you for referring to your daughter as much as you have on television programs. I think parents would like to hear more adult entertainers talk about children and have concern for them. But Lisa Marie walked through the house. I came back into the mansion. I'd stepped out to run some errands, and she was walking through the house. Nine years old, Joan, and big tears streaming down her cheeks, saying Daddy was on the bathroom floor and we couldn't wake him up. It was, it was a devastating time for all of us, and particularly a nine-year-old child. Oh, I mean, how, do you, how does a child get over that? Find your father dead on the bathroom floor from drugs? The only thing that I And the can... girlfriend scrubbing her back. I mean, no. this is... And, and the help... Mm -hmm. Drug out of their minds. I, mean, I think the only thing that can help is time. Yeah. I think she's older now. I think that she's been able to get a good handle on it and understand the problems her dad had. What about Priscilla, who I liked very much when I met her? She tried very hard in that marriage because she must have known he was cheating. Wouldn't she oh, come yeah. back like Jackie Onassis opened a drawer in the White House and found panties? Mm -hmm. I mean, where does it stop? You don't know that story? Come back, we'll do another show. Mm -hmm. But, anyhow, but, uh, <laughs> but um, did she know he was cheating? Did she have any inkling of what yes. was going on? Yes, Priscilla knew. It was difficult, Joan, because what we would have to do is take the dresses out of the suite, the Vegas suite. Well, he would leave, she would go home on a Monday. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you would, you would take the and dresses out of the suite? Part of my responsibility going with a yellow pad and mark where the dresses were in her closet, take them out take him to another room, another girl would come in and spend a week with him, I'd bring the dresses back in. The fact of the matter is Priscilla put up with a whole lot. Priscilla hung in there a real, real long time. And Priscilla's a terrific lady and a terrific mom, and she put up with more than most women would. She said in her book that ever, he didn't like, he had two kinds of women in his life, what he considered whores and Virgin Marys. Mm -hmm. And the minute Priscilla had Lisa Marie, he never slept with her again. She said because he, she became the mother. Mm -hmm. Is that is that what you heard too? I mean, I know you. I mean, I don't think your your ear was at the, the bedroom no. door, which mine would have mm -hmm. been. But uh, well, <laughs> if you're in the house and you've got a glass, how does it hurt? Why not? But uh, <laughs> but. Uh, did, was that, you think, when the division came? I don't know what happened there, Joan. Uh, I know that uh, Elvis was not fulfilling her needs and wants. I understand the situation she was involved with. I don't know why Elvis got to that point. I don't she know. She sure was good looking. Beautiful. <gasps> she, she scared me at first. The first time I met her in the 60s, I walked into the mansion. She was sitting there. She had the black hair and the mascara. She reminded me of a vampire, so she scared me. <laughs> but she got prettier and prettier the older that she got. And uh, I don't really understand. I don't know what happened behind those doors, but uh, I understand her point of view. Very well. We're going to go into the audience and ask some questions. I want to know, you all lived in the house. I met somebody named Charlie, the Charlie drama who I mm -hmm. love, Charlie Hodges. Do you see each other? When the death happened, what happened right after that? The, the, the Memphis Mafia continue. We'll be back and questions from the audience, so don't go anywhere. It's every time we And uh, with Elvis' and stepbrother, Rick Stanley, and you have a question. Yes, what influence did his mother have on him? Elvis' mom had a tremendous influence on him. I think some people have gone a little bit too far with making it out as an obsession. Elvis was an only child. He was very, very close to his mother. And I think what really hurt the man was he was not able to get back to her side when she died in August of 58. Uh, they were very close. I think it was a tremendous relationship, though. But was he vain? I mean, now, did he get, I remember Walter Cronkite once called him, I think it was Walter Cronkite, called him Fat and Forty. Fat did they just kill him? Yes, it really hurt him. Elvis is the only man I ever met in life who could strut sitting down. He was incredibly vain. He was very, very concerned with his appearance. 
as most entertainers are, but that really, really hurt him when Walter made that comment. Did he wear a girdle at the end? Because I saw him in Vegas, and he was fat and bloated, and it looked like he was wearing a girdle. Was that a girdle? Or? No, what we did was we had a large spool of saran wrap, and what we did was we walked around him and put saran wrap in to hold his stomach in. He was pretty much at that point, the last few years of his life, just mouthing the words. He wasn't really, really singing that much. Not a girdle, just saran wrap. <sighs> Hi, uh, was the end inevitable for Elvis in this fashion, or is there anything we could have done or you could have done to have changed that outcome? Oh, I think now, as I look back, being honest with myself, I wish that I would have had enough nerve to confront the man, but I was strung out on heroin myself. I think it was inevitable that I would have prescribed drugs on an ongoing basis. It's going to catch up with you, and unfortunately, it did Elvis Presley. There was a woman who wrote a book that, her, that she claims her daughter, she's about 25 now, is Elvis's. How do you feel about that, in your opinion? I think it's ridiculous. The, the, the sad thing about being related to Elvis now, there's so many people talking, even those that are legitimate or suspect. I know Elvis has one little girl named Lisa Marie Presley, and that's it, and she's a terrific kid. She looks just like her dad. Did you stay close? I asked you that right before the commercial. Did you all stay close after the death, or no. do you still keep in touch no, I have uh, no. I have no contact with the uh, people that uh, work with Elvis or the estate, Priscilla, Lisa, Marie. My family is pretty much my beautiful wife sitting there and my wife and two little girls at home. That's my family. How did you turn yourself around? I turned myself around. Uh, I had an experience with Christ. I'm a minister. I'm a Christian. My life was changed. And I know that's not popular, but I had an experience in my life changed. I kicked dope been straight for 12 hey, years. My dear, didn't... anyone that gets out of drugs, that's very popular. Don't say that's not popular. <laughs> Do you think it's possible that his lack of interest in Priscilla was uh, through a drug-induced impotence? I think there's a strong possibility there, but at that particular time, Elvis was not completely out of it and incoherent. I think it was more of a psychological thing that he had more than a drug-induced state. What are some of the misconceptions about Elvis? Well, I think the thing that people don't consider him an intelligent human being, a lot of people think he's from the South, he's not that sharp. Elvis was incredible. Elvis had a brilliant mind, he was well read, he had a real interest in philosophy, psychology, religion, things like that. He was brilliant, he was compassionate, most of us know that. He was a tremendous human being. And yet he couldn't see what he was doing himself. The whole world, we all saw, right? Who are we kidding? We all saw Elizabeth Taylor get fat and she pulled herself together. We all saw Elvis get fat and bloated. And just, uh... He had a blind spot there, Joan, and we have people watching now that have family members that have the same thing, and they don't care enough to confront them to say, look, this alcohol, look, these prescribed drugs, or this, that, or the other, it's going to catch up with you. They're blind spots. With all the money Elvis had, why would he even bother with drugs? Couldn't he find, like, a better outlet? Famous is as addictive as any drug. It's imperative that people Oh, understand. yeah, but I'm famous, and I don't go for drugs. I mean, one thing is, I do, I'm so tired of this. That. Let me ask you. He was a night person, right? Yes. He slept all day. Did all of you then have to change your schedules around? Did you all have to become night people? Oh, yes. I was definitely a night person. I want people to understand I'm not saying that drugs and fame go together. I'm saying fame is addictive. Oh, yes, Elvis, I know uh, Elvis uh, was very nocturnal. He stayed up late at night, and just when the sun was going coming up, we'd usually go to bed. But did you have to stay up with him? That's what I'm saying. Yes, I had to stay up with him, but fortunately, uh, at that particular time, I had something to keep me up to stay up with him. Uh, it was almost impossible otherwise to do so. His father lived with him. Didn't he have an influence on him at this point in his life? Daddy had a house adjacent to the mansion, and we did our best to keep things from Elvis. We hid things, so Daddy... We hid things from Daddy so Daddy wouldn't do it. There are a few people that Elvis answered to, Priscilla, Vernon Presley, uh, and that was just about it. And this sounds like a really stupid question. You think the mother had lived, he would have been different? Pardon? It's a dumb question, cause I, but do you think if the mother had lived, if his mother had lived, he was so, much, so close to her, do you think it would have been different? He wouldn't have done the drugs? He wouldn't have done all this? I think so. I think she had that much of an influence on his life. I think he'd probably still be with us. Was Elvis on pres prescription drugs, illegal drugs, too? No, Elvis was on prescribed drugs. I was the one abusing heroin and cocaine. Elvis was very much against those things. As a matter of fact, we went to D.C. one time at, through the FBI building, and I had cocaine and heroin in the boot. And He was very much against those things. You, you had cocaine and heroin in, in your boots? 
Yes, I had a fly boots that I used to wear and coke and heroin down in there. We went through the FBI, FBI building. I had real long hair. I was a little bit nervous and tentative about the whole thing, to be honest with you. I think you can understand why. But he was very much against very much against street drugs. But yet, he was he was a druggie. I mean, it's easy to say he was a druggie. Unfortunately. And, and where was, and the doctors? What about the doctors that keep kept prescribing? We had a, many Dr. Feelgoods around Elvis Presley who were willing to give him anything. We went to the hospital on two different occasions to dry out. And all they really did was monitor the medication. They did not dry him out. Unfortunately, if we be honest, we've got to be honest with ourselves. He was a druggie toward the end of his life. Now, we've all heard this, and we know it's awful, but we also, you and I, perhaps more than these other people, saw him when he was wonderful. So just to end this on a good note, say something just one, because I can tell you he was a gentleman and a wonderful, dear, sweet, concerned father. You say something nice, and then we'll go to Well, let me say, first of all, he shared the same sentiment toward you. He thought of a lot of you, thought you were beautiful, had a crush on you, just like Yeah, Yes, sure, people. right. But, that, Elvis... We're talking before he was on drugs. <laughs> that was... That, he was, um... The way, the, way I, the way I remember the man is here's a guy who took me into his home after I'd been pushed away as a little boy, unconditionally welcomed me into his family. He was a terrific entertainer. He tried his best to be a good, good father. He was very, very gracious to me. He loved his fans. Why concentrate on the last few years when you can look at 23 years of great entertainment? And that's a nice way to go out. Thank you very much. We'll be right back.